Welcome to another week of worship. We are happy that you chose New Mount Zion. Some of you may be looking for a church home, a place to find friendship, visiting with your family, a place to serve, looking to know Christ better, seeking to understand where you fit into God's plan for mankind. Or you may not be sure of exactly what you are looking for. Whatever the reason, we hope this message is a blessing to you. Very briefly, the 53rd verse, it says, So the Father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. Very briefly, we want to use for a thought when a man meet Jesus. When a man meet Jesus. I want you to say that with us. <clears throat> when a man meet Jesus. My brothers and sisters, I believe that many of us, all of us, are aspiring to do great things in life. I believe all of us are aspiring to take our family, our generation to another level. Many of us have acquired skills that we can use to advance our careers. Many of you have studied <clears throat> and have equipped yourself with tools to help you sharpen yourself for a challenging society. But I believe that the greatest thing we could ever do as a man is to make sure that we know Jesus. I want us to see this in these two passages. In these two passages of scripture, we will see something that will help us. In chapter number five, this is about an impotent man, a man who was crippled. I'm gonna make this story short, paraphrase, that there was by the pool of Bethesda, five porches and all people hung around this place were sick folk. Some blind, some halted, some withered, and different had, people had different conditions. And at a certain season, God would send an angel. <clears throat> and that angel would stir the water. And whoever got in first would get a miracle. And the reason why that is significant because many times, many of us were hanging out with people with, the, with conditions at wor worse than ours. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Many times we're hindered because we're hanging out at the wrong place. You can't get a breakthrough. You can't, you can't rise to the next level because you're hanging out with folk who's still doing what you're trying to get away from. Oops, I, 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 listen, I didn't mean to insult nobody right here. I didn't mean to expose. Because look at this. The Bible said that for 38 years, look at it with me, verse number 5. It said a certain man which had an infirmity 38 years. 38 years he was laying there. Now, I want you to understand something, the significance of this, because this is in the book of St. John. He is introducing us to the deity or the deity of Christ. He's showing us how Christ, how he's able to supersede the law of nature. He's showing us that Christ is not only 100% God, but he's showing us that he's 100% man and that he's the master of them both. <clears throat> So John is trying to show you that when a man is in a physical condition, Jesus understands, but if the man move into the right position, Jesus can deliver him. Talk to me, somebody. You, you, you. See, because many times, many of us don't want to be delivered because we like our condition and because now it's a crutch. I, you know, I've had so many people to tell me, preachers, I have so many people to tell me, so well, that's just the way I am. Oh, Reverend, you just don't know me. That's just the way I am. 
I don't mind you being the way you are. I just want you to understand the consequences that come with you being like you are. Understand that if you don't plant oranges, if you plant grapes, don't be, don't be upset when grapes come back. Because the Bible said the same thing that a man soweth. What he gonna reap? So if that's the way you are, and you want new results, I just want to drop this in your buggy in your cart before you check out. I want to tell you, you can't get something new doing the same old thing. Can I get a witness? But watch this. Here's what, here's what, here's what was so amazing. Here was so amazing that really caught my attention with this passage because notice this for thirty-eight years. 38 years. Now, somebody say it with me, 38 years. <clears throat> now, this man that knew that the water was going to be trouble, he knew that the law was going to be, he knew that the water was going to be trouble and that it was going to be his opportunity for his breakthrough. It was going to be his opportunity for a breakthrough. But notice what the Bible said. Listen at this. It says in verse number six, when Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had now a long time been in that case. And Jesus asked the man, said, listen, now, listen, brother, I want to I wanna help you. Let me put it in this term. He said, I want to help you. Will you be made whole? Do you want to be fixed? <laughs> Do you want to be fixed? See, sometimes you, you, see, a lot of time we, 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 hear what we do, we enable people in their condition. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing right there. Yeah, yeah, we're, we enable people in their condition rather than enable them. We need to ask them, do you want to be fixed? Yeah, we don't, we don't, listen, we don't turn a lie into just a little white lie. Those of you that studied Sunday school, that's what, that's what the prophet was trying to tell the children of Israel. And that God said that, listen, you're doing all the outward thing, but your heart ain't with me. You doing, you're going to church, but you're not changing. You're clapping your hand, but you're not worshiping. You're hearing the message, but you're looking at, you're saying, I wish he was shut up. You're not trying to hear God. You're trying to change God. And hear what he's saying. As long as we remain the way we are, we'll still keep getting the same results. Jesus asked the man, listen, 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 I don't care. Now, I want to put this into modern day term when he said, will I be made whole? Do you want to be cleansed from all of your lying, your backstabbing, your cheating, your adultery, your fornication? Do you want to be cleansed from all of that? Do you want to be forgiven for the time that you done smiled and folk face, stabbed them in their back? Do you want to be forgiven for the time that you got so high and don't remember how you got home? Do you want to be forgiven for the time you got drunk and you really wrecked the car and you tried to say that somebody hit you? Do you really want to be forgiven for the time you went out of town saying you were going on vacation and in actuality you were going on a sweetheart, a, a honey bun run? Do you really want to be forgiven? He's asking you, do you want to be made whole? And all we got to do is say, yes, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I've been lying and I'm ready to be made whole. Lord, I done committed adultery and I'm ready to be made whole. Lord, I committed fornication I'm ready to be made whole. Lord, I've been a backstab and I'm ready to be made whole. But instead of we coming clean with God, look what the man did. And many of us do the same thing. Look at what the next verse said. The next verse simply said, now listen, the impotent man answered him. 38 years after being at, Lord, listen, I have no man. Listen, he said, I have no man, listen, when the water's trouble to put me in the pool. I don't have nobody to put me in the pool. <clears throat> Is that in your Bible? In other words, he became codependent on people. I, I think that's one of the things that causes us a setback because we wait on folk. Oh, y'all gonna help me right here. 
And let me drop something in your hat. The same folk you waiting to help you, sometimes them will be the very one laughing at you when you're down. If some of the same folk, listen, if it's up to some of your friends, if you, the way your friends are, some of you don't need enemies, so you can't rely on people anyhow. You really have the passion to change, but now you're afraid to do it because you, it may cause you to break camaraderie with your friend. Well, guess what? You, if you want to go to hell, you can go by yourself. Look what it said. Look what it said. The man answered him. Jesus said, listen, I'm ready to help you. I already know what you, how long you've been here, brother. I already know your condition, and I just want to ask you, who do you want to be made whole? And he said, Lord, I have no man. Let me change that to a modern day state. The Lord said, girl, do, do you want me to make you a happy woman? I would, but Lord, I don't have no man. How you going to be happy? Well, I don't have money. Listen, let me tell you something. If you can't be happy with you and God all by yourself, first, you're not going to help them. You're not going to bring more happiness to a house because you're going to bring all of that frustration. You might be still angry over a 20-year-old relationship. You still needing somebody. You still you still letting your happiness be based on what happened in the past. Well, you can keep living in the past if you want to, but I'm going to look to the hills from which cometh all my help. Listen, just touch somebody right quick and tell them and say, when a man meets Jesus. When a, I wish I had enough time to do this here, but but look 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 here. What's so amazing to me in this passage here? Jesus knew his condition. <clears throat> I want to share this with us on Father's Day. There's nothing mm, frailty about us that Christ don't already know. He know if you have low self-esteem. He know if you was abused when you was a child. He know how many times you've given your heart and people walked all over. He knows. He knows how many times people have mistreated you. He knows all of this about us as men and women. But when he give us the opportunity to move forward, we have to be willing to say yes. Or oh, talk to me, somebody. I, I, wish somebody, I wish somebody in here would help me preach right quick and tell your neighbor, say, don't let your past hold you from your future. And you still depressed over last year, and I'm shouting about next year. I just need to know what that leaves five of you to learn how to shake it off, pack it under your feet, and say, this is my year. This is my moment. I don't care what I've been through. I still got blessings to come. God still got, Lord have mercy, he still got a miracle with my name on it. My name on it. Yeah, that's it. You're not being arrogant, but somebody ought to just take a moment and just tell the Lord, thank you that my name is on it. Not my mama, not my daddy, not my sister, my brother, my cousin, not my boss, but my, my name is on this one. My name is on this healing. My name is on this promotion. My name is on this joy. So look what happened. The impotent man answered him, the water's troubled, and I don't have nobody to put me in the pool. Then every time I come, Lord, there's always somebody running faster than me. People are always trying to get ahead of me. Oh, but let me drop this in your cart before you check out. The last shall be first. If you ever been last, your first day is coming. If you ever been walked on, listen, let me tell you something. You better get ready to walk on water. If you ever been mistreated, you better believe that you're going to have joy, that exceed, that abundantly supersede all that you can ask or think. If you ever been, if your heart ever been broken, you better believe that you're going to experience a peace and a heart healing that no man could ever do for you. Somehow ought to just, and after a while, you'll write all your enemies a check and say, thank you for that lie. 
Girl, you remember that time you dug that ditch for me? Here's a thousand dollars. You remember that time when I was depressed about three months over the way you had treated me? Girl, I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to give you $1,500. I'm going to sow the seed in because it was that experience that caused me to learn how to walk on faith. It was that experience that made me finally come to the place to tell the devil you can't take what God has given me. To tell the devil what God has for me. It is for me. Touch somebody right quick and tell them so when a man meet Jesus. I have about four or five minutes. But amazing, watch this. Out of that whole encounter, Jesus still rose above his lack of faith. Still operated beyond his inadequacies. Aren't you glad that Jesus operates it doesn't change based on your condition. Y'all got to help me right here. All he's waiting is for you to get the right disposition. See, watch this. It's not about, it's not about you being broke. It's about you having faith. It's not about you being left by yourself. It's about you trusting God. It's not about, it's not about how things are going for you right now, but it's about trusting God because how many know that God didn't bring you this far to leave you now? You need to help me preach. I got a few minutes. Touch somebody right quick and tell them, he didn't bring me this far to leave me. He, 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 he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. I don't care what the doctor said. He's going to bring me out of this. I don't care how it feels in my left leg. God going to bring me out of this. I don't care how it feels in my back. God is going to bring me out of this. Somebody got a few bounce check, but I come to tell you, God said, Let it's all right. He said, because guess what? This is going to be your testimony after a while when I get through blessing you. You're going to tell somebody, I've been there, done that, but God brought me through and watch this even though seemed like this man was impotent laying on his stretcher seemed like somebody should have been kind enough to help him Seem like somebody should have wanted to lend them a helping hand. See, see sometimes the pain that you endure, even though you may not have operated at the level that you should have, God is still keeping the record. Even though you hear the preacher say, listen, coming to church is not enough. God is still keeping the record that at least you press in your way. You may hear the preacher say, listen, we come to church, clap our hands, but that's not enough. But God still, he's still keeping a personal life record because he know what you had to leave to get here this morning. He know what you've been through this week that could have kept you. So while the preacher preaching the word of God, he's working in your individual life. And sometimes it may be totally contrary to what I'm saying at that moment because he's doing something personal for you. He's keeping the record. You need to touch somebody and tell him he's keeping the record. Because watch this. Can I have a few extra minutes on Father's Day? He told the man, he said, listen, verse number eight, once Jesus asked the man, first, listen, verse number six, he said, will thou be made whole? And the next time Jesus spoke with him, verse number eight, here's what he said, listen, I'm not going to wait on the angels to come trouble the water. I'm not going to do it the traditional way because this is your moment. Oh, I wish somebody caught that. I, I, listen, I, I just want to ask this question. See, because you've been, somebody here been going through for a long time. And I come to tell you today that this is your moment. See, when your moment come on God's clock, 
There's nothing that can hinder you or hold you back. Because Jesus said unto him, verse number eight, he said, listen, here's what I want you to do. Just rise. You ain't got to worry about the angel. You don't have to worry about the water being troubled. Even though I put that process in motion, and you don't even have to worry about somebody helping you. See, because how many here today have you reached a place now to where you thank God for people, but you don't learn how to put all your trust in God. How many thank God today because the man the man was told by Jesus, he said, rise. First thing when you think about rising he mean not just physically but rise in your faith. Rise, rise. Rise from the bed of doubt. Quit laying on your unbelief. Quit padding your mattress with fear. Quit laying your head on the pillar of frustration. And rise up. Y'all got to help me preach. I'm about done. Y'all tell somebody to rise up. I, I, know you, I know pain is wrecking in your body, but I want you to rise up. And Jesus knew the man had been hurting. But listen, let me tell you something. You need to rise. Don't worry about the pain. Do your best. But rise. Arthritis ain't no match for me if you rise. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, <clears throat> he told him, he said, rise. Watch this. Not only rise up in your faith, but rise up in your focus. The reason why you can't see, brother, because you've been looking at people. You've been looking to somebody to do something for you that they don't even have the ability to, to do. Many times you're looking for folk to give you joy and they don't have no joy. You're looking for people to help lift up your head when their head is always down. You're looking for somebody to give you some motivation when they are drinking from the well of depression. And I come to tell you today, quit looking to people and just rise. Help me right quick, touch somebody and tell them, so rise. Yeah, yeah, this, this rise <clears throat> was not just the kind of rise that means to move a little bit. There has to be some action. It's like a signature on a check that validates that this thing is good. Your rising in Christ cannot just be <clears throat> with words. You cannot rise and just say, Lord, I love you. But you got to rise in both your words and your action. <clears throat> Talk is cheap. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah, we got to learn to put that. The old people say, put your money where your mouth is. <clears throat> Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Don't just say you love God. Do what he say do. Because he said faith without works is dead anyhow. And the truth of the matter is, you're not impressing me if you don't do what you say. Can I get a witness? So he told the man, if you would rise, this would be the sign of your rising. I want you to take up your bed and then walk. In other words, <clears throat> the same bed that you've been laying on. The same bed that's been holding you down. The same bed that's been your comfort zone for a long time. Can I get a witness? It's time for you to take up that bed and walk. Can I get a witness? It's time for you to begin to exemplify strength over your situation. Can I get a witness? Too long we've been waiting for the outside world. Can I get a witness? Too long we've been waiting for people to give us a push. Can I get a witness? But the truth of the matter is, all we need to do is just rise. 
Can I get no witness? The Bible said he told the man to rise, take up your bed, and begin to walk. Thank God, all right. Every now and then, we got to show God I'm able to carry some stuff. Thank God. Every now and then, we need to show God the same places that used to hold me down. Thank God. All right. I'm able to rise up. Thank God. All right. Is there anybody here have learned to rise? Can I get a witness? Reach up and touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I met Jesus. Thank God, all right. And he told me to rise up. Thank God, all right. And I heard the writer saying that not only did the man rise up, but he took up his bed and began to walk. Thank God, all right. How many here today can look back and see the old places that you used to lay. See the old places that used to hold you back. And you can say, thank God that I've been changed. Can I get a window? And people want to know what is it that changed your life. And you can tell them one day I met Jesus. Thank God. All right, uh, I was laying by the pool of the pressure. Can I get a win? He picked me up, turned me around, played my feet on shiny ground. Good evening to you. I got to leave you now, but I need somebody to help me preach. Get a neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, let me tell you, since I met Jesus, Something done change about my attitude. The same thing that used to make me mad. They don't make me mad like they used to. The same thing that I used to fight about. I don't even worry about. Because my Bible says if I hold my peace, God will fight my battle. Can I get them help here? Shove your arm around your neighbor and say, neighbor, God will. Y'all got to help me right quick. Say, God will fight my battle. Won't he do it? Say, yeah. Say, yeah. Say, yeah. Ah, say, yeah. Thank you for visiting with New Mount Zion on 103.7 The Beat. We hope this message has been a blessing to you and that you join us again next week. You may also join us every Sunday at 1045 a.m. for our morning worship service under the direction of Pastor Alan Ray Bolton. New Mount Zion is located at 2117 Baker Street in Muskegon Heights. Our mission is to bring persons into a saving and redemptive relationship with Jesus Christ. We are a spiritual body whose only foundation is the Word of God. We fulfill our ministry as we preach and teach, pray and empower, forgive and reconcile. If you would like to learn more about our ministry, please call 231 726 2948. May God be a blessing to you and your family.